Our final speaker, Andrea Cook. She is the president of FCB6, a one-to-one -one and digital performance agency with more than two decades of communication experience. Andrea is an industry leader in the art of connecting brands to individuals in the digital and data age. Andrea, come on up. I don't work for Diply. Oh, good. That's me. So I have nothing about cockroaches, I'm afraid, guys. Sorry. Uh, I'm sure none of us have read any articles that have anything to do with this in, uh, in recent weeks. Listen, uh, my theory on what's happening right now is not that you know, advertising is dying because of data or advertising is dying because technology is here. I think, I think that we have taken a really timid approach to the way the changes are happening. I think this is an industry that has moved at a snail's pace for a really long time, and now it's moving really fast. And we're not trained, we're ill-equipped to manage that, that pace of change. But my friends, I think where there is pressure, there is diamonds. And if we can find a way to lean into some of those changes, we're gonna find success. What the hell am I talking about? Let's all agree that consumers are changing, right? Agreed? 100% aligned? Yep. The way they buy, they buy media or buy um, products, the way they consume media, consumers have changed, no question. And we've done some really good stuff to help elevate emotional connection to brands by elevating brand, brand purpose, correct? Great. It's led to some awesome work. Nike nailed it, right? No one can argue with that. What the hell happened to Gillette? Did you guys see all the arguments about that? What happened? Is it the slimming, the slimming differential between authentic brand purpose and opportunism? Is that it? I think, and you could argue, and I'm free to answer questions after, that it wasn't enough. I think that the definition of what matters to me is so different than what matters to you. you know, it might be about price for me or, or social responsi responsibility. It might be about innovation to someone else. The fact of the matter is that a brand has a responsibility to connect to an individual. And I'm not sure Gillette went the whole uh, country mile in that capacity. You guys might know this guy named Mark Pritchard. Uh, he runs a company called P&G, um, or CMO, and he talked at CES this year about envisioning a world with no ads. Now, I'm not sure I subscribe to that because I'd probably get killed um, in my job, but um, what he's talking about is the, is the thinning of the space between what a brand is and what a brand experience is. And I, I articulate that as this concept of brand as utility, right? It's, it's this idea that's been around since the dawn of the dinosaurs in advertising, and Leo Burnett himself used to speak about this, that our job is the art of getting noticed naturally, right? That's, that's what we do as advertisers. However, the platforms are so much more vast than they've ever been before, and we have a job to do around being useful for people. And so you, then all the brand people in the world um, say, oh my God, does this mean brands, are, you know, brands aren't important and that brand purpose and brand identity aren't important? And I'm not saying that at all. In fact, if you think about a world where individuality of um, communication is so important, if we don't have that true north, if we don't have the thing that the brand stands for, we're in deep, you know what? Right? So we need to be able to embrace that true north of our brand, but we also need to be embrace the translation we need to be able to embrace the translation of that down to the individual. Number two, digital has changed. I'm pretty sure digital changed in the time since I walked up to the stage and now. Right? No question. Thankfully, I believe that we've now at least erased that dismal line that existed between brand and digital. Yes, we aligned. Brand is digital, digital is brand, yes, yes. Come on. Tell me you believe this. I have to leave. Um, so I believe the waves have washed that away, but I think we actually have a new problem. And we talk about this as big D versus little d digital. What do I mean by that? I think that we have habitual ways that we define what digital is. We select agencies as marketers. We develop ad campaigns. We put strategies into market. And we do them in our context of the way we've always done things. And we might not be including the latest thing that just happened five minutes ago, or we might not be thinking about a new form of data that comes to us. And that puts us in this little d category. And we need to be all encompassing of the big D. Let me give an example. Her lots of conversation tonight about digital. We always, always talk about the front of the journey. We always talk about acquisition. What about all this stuff? Is it not a marketing philosophy that we're supposed to get more out of our existing customers? Is that not a thing anymore? 
And why are we so focused on paid? And why are we so focused on ad tech? What about MarTech? You can argue that even down, down the journey, the people that are doing that other side really, really well, they're not doing the collective well at all. And we have to fix that. Um, data is killing creativity. I don't believe that, thank God, because I run a data company. Um, I don't think at all that data is killing creativity. In fact, my creative partner, Ian McKenzie, amazing guy, talks about um, that creativity loves constraints. If you think about a creative team receiving a brief, it would be miserable if there was no, no um, confines around that, right? A, a team with a brief is gonna do better than a team without a, without a specific brief, and data provides that opportunity. But I agree with these guys. Data can't be about models and AI. It sucks, there's no human element to it. There's no emotion, there's no connectivity, no understanding. You guys are probably familiar with the Spotify campaign. It's been running for three years, yeah? Awesome, amazing first party data. They have data that nobody else has, but if you didn't have a human being taking that petabytes of data and translating it down into a thing that actually meant something to a human being, it could never be successful. But I also think we have a bias towards the way we drive insights. We look back, we are, we're, we're trained to pull up um, you know, a, a, a truth and then create against it. And that's awesome. And looking back is important. Research is important to identi identify those insights. But guess what? Some of the best communications that are happening today are happening with real time communications. You know, we talked about dominoes with, shit, was it dominoes? Yes. Um, um, with Michelle, and I think Starbucks is a really good example of that. I'm sure there's a few Starbucks drinkers in here, a few app holders. You know, the, the communications that are coming back to you, the tailoredness of that, of that construct is so important to, to driving behavior today. So Big D Digital, to me, is about the full journey. It is about full CX. It's about ad tech and MarTech, and it's about the full stack of data that's available to you. So I'll leave you with this thought. This is not mine, I'd love to own this, but it is not mine. My creative partner, Ian, again, um, published in Medium a few months ago, you should go check it out. Um, in this, it was called Simple is Bad, and it's about uncovering the simplicity bias that we have uh, as marketers today. And before you throw eggs at me, it's not saying that simple is truly bad. It's saying that we're in a really, really complex world of data and technology. And our refusal to lean into that means that we can't get through it, make it great, and define our own simple. So my thing is, anything is possible. Pick the thing you wanna do, then find the data and tech to support it, and then find a big fat human bow and wrap it around it, and I promise you, you'll be successful. Thanks so much.